Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We we'll bless your name. We ask, Lord, that you speak to us clearly. Speak to us powerfully. Open our hearts to understand. We pray, Lord, that we will apply what we will hear. That your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. I'm so glad to be here. I came with Pastor Abraham. Pastor Abraham, where are you? Pastor Abraham is a trainer, very powerful trainer. He has online training materials that are bought from different countries. He just volunteered to come with me. Please clap for Abraham. I want to thank the pastor, the, the pastorate here for inviting me. I'm so proud to be a member of this great commission. I we are loaded. When I saw my sister singing, I had to ask, is, he, is she one of us? Yes. And I'm so proud that um, we have people like this. From generation to generation, we've had them. I also want to thank the protocol team, my daughter, Emwa, for the special attention. She has paid to the details that, will, that kept me comfortable. I want to thank our brother that came to carry me from Ugeli. I thank you all. Thank the choir, the instrumentalist, the media team. I bring you greetings from my wife. She's not able to come. We've been married for 38 years. How many of you saw my video that I've been stupid for 38 years? How many of you saw it? Yes, you have to be stupid to remain married. Falling in love is common sense, leaving your brain. It's, 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 only, it's only in marriage, if you want to remain married as a Christian, you even apologize when you are right. You apologize when you are right. Intelligent people don't remain married. Melinda and Bill Gates, you can see them. Wale Shenka, you can see them. Dangote, you can see them. It takes stupidity to remain married. And uh, I've been stupid for 38 years. And I'm very happy that I'm stupid. I'm happily stupid. <laughs> uh, the, my, the wedding ring is more than a handcuff. In fact, marriage is selecting your cell meet, your prison meet, the one you will share your prison, prison cell with forever. Very interesting things like pepper soup that you cooked for yourself. You are drinking it. <sighs> when I see young boys during their reception dancing like this and the girls, I say, see Mumu, do you know what you are going into? <laughs> if it's possible, marriage is like a secret cult. Those of us who are inside, we want to come out, but we're encouraging others to join us. <laughs> if it is possible to marry half-wife, I will have married half. I will only marry from the navel down. I won't marry from here up. Because women can't talk. Hey, you say what? <laughs> Why did you say would they marry? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I will make heaven. I will surprise you. I will make heaven. <laughs> the pastor, his family and finances sold 1,600 copies in 45 minutes at the Balm of Gilead. Is it will show you how we have managed to create wealth in a suburban economy. Ugeli was a small town when I went there. But none of my mates will come from any part of the world. I have classmates all over the world and intimidate me with anything. With anything. So even if you are a teacher, a nurse, a doctor, please get this material. And then there is the philosophy of the ant. I build every day. I built my first house when I was 30-something. Then cement was 50 naira a bag. Most of you young people, you are spending too much on fashion. You carry human hair on your coconut head with two and a half credits. That's, don't look at me like that. You can't do anything. <laughs> 
That's 550,000 you are carrying on your head. You can't see that you are not progressing. 550,000 is 100 bags of cement. That's 4,000 blocks. That's a three-bedroom bungalow you are carrying on your head. If you park three cars in front of another man's house, you are a stupid person. Each of those cars can build a house. I have several vehicles, but I use them to look for money. So the philosophy of the ants break down your challenges to small units and start attacking them. Money is an idiot. Money has no religion. If a Muslim knows how to make money more than you, he will be richer than you. In fact, the richest black men that have lived were Muslims. Mansa Kankamusa, the black, the richest man that ever lived after Solomon was a Muslim. Then Dangote. The principles of making money are universal. Once you know them, you know them. Then the oil of marriage. I'm seeing so many young people here. The oil of marriage is only for married people. It talks about premature ejaculation, talks about orgasm, talks about several things. I'm 64, but I treat my wife like a side chick. Before, if I want to go to bed, I shave my beard because I don't want to embrace her from behind. Then beards will start pricking her neck. I cut my nails. You cut your nails, file them in one direction so that, so that they don't injure her. Then I perfume myself so that when she turns to embrace me, I'm a living sacrifice with a sweet smelling salad. And then, when she performs well, I give her money. Sometimes I pay in advance so that the oil can keep flowing, you understand? Old gun still the fire, it is here because I've been 64. Old, I'm 64, but old gun can still kill. Flipping. <laughs> this boy, they, this boy won't die for dinner. But your own, your, you people, your own is too crude. Bola, ba, cassava, yam, cucumber, two minute man. Your own is too crude. You know, yash suddenly became the vogue now. Your generation is in trouble. <laughs> Flipping your financial page, that is to say, turning to a new chapter in your finances getting into a new level in your finances. It's very challenging that it is in the time of an economic depression like this that I'm being given this responsibility to speak on. And so we are going to take our bearing from Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12, and then we'll take our bearing from Ruth chapter 1 from verse 22, then 2 Kings chapter 4 you will get to that place. But there are some key issues you must realize as a Christian for you to flip your finances in any circumstances. Number one, the consciousness that you are born again, that you are a spiritual being. That you are a spiritual being. That you are like the wind and that your finances should not be determined by the prevailing circumstances. I made more money under Buhari, and I've started making more money under Tinibu. I don't allow the price of the dollar to influence my mind. I earn dollars in Nigeria. But number one, the yuan and the dollar, which one is higher? Who is owing who? The dollar is higher than the Chinese currency. I'm not going to speak under pressure. That's your time, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm a worried boy. I'm not normal. <laughs> the dollar is higher than the, the yuan. But the Chinese are being owed by Americans. So it is not the value of your currency that matters. It is the value you create that matters. But 
when you got born again, you are, the, you are like the wind. And wind determines climate. And climate determines productivity. We are having rainfall now because of the southwest monsoon winds from the Atlantic Ocean bringing water. When the northeast trade winds will come from the desert, we will have dust and dryness. I live in a small town. I don't run a church. When I came to Ugeli, they said Ugeli was a dry ground. Many of them ran to Lagos. But they have come back to meet me richer. So you can influence the economy of your environment. Being born again. You must come to the understanding that you are joint heads with Christ means joint account owners. That must sink in. If not, being this born again thing is just useless if you don't under have these ideas. That you are a joint account owner. That you can sign for money as Christ signs for money. And that he was crucified and made poor so that you can become rich. And that God did the first money ritual. Understand that. God did the first money ritual before the foundation of the earth. So if hunchback can give somebody money, Christ is the life of God and the blood of God was poured for your sake. Being poor is a fundamental right in the Bible. Say the poor shall be with you always. But being rich is a choice. So, I have come to the consciousness that God killed the firstborns in Egypt. And the lamb that was, the blood of the lamb that was put on the doorpost gave the wealth of Egypt to the children of Israel. And so, the wealth of this nation can also come to me because Christ died for me. Now, why is it that Christians are poor? One thing I will say, you don't cut from your feet when your shoes are aching your feet. Did you hear me well? You don't reduce your feet when your shoes are aching you. You throw away those shoes. When you get to a certain level in life and your finances are not meeting your needs, you need bigger finances. It is not to be adjusting into poverty. You create more wealth. It is in the process of creating more wealth that you flip your financial page. But how can you create more wealth? There has to be a strong desire, a strong desire. You see, the Nigerians like suffering. Christians like suffering too. I prayed and I prayed and Jesus answered me. I prayed, I prayed. You think God is as wicked as your father? <laughs> My granddaughter does not ask before I give to her. My grandson is a European citizen. From the day he was born, the government started paying him salary at month end. They have made arrangements for his university education till PhD because he's a citizen of that European country. When my son went to fill the birth certificate, I asked him, what do you feel, Nigeria? He said, no. He said, I said, to say you feel Nigeria, I will slap you through this phone. <laughs> so... Because he's a king, he's a citizen of that kingdom, the kingdom makes provision for him. So, with the preceding materials I shared with you now, when you come to that consciousness, you can magnet money. You don't understand me. I heard that Kobams spoke to the old boys of government college, Ugeli, and they paid him half a million for speaking for 50. 15 minutes. Kobams is blind. And they immediately carried him to the airport to fly to South Africa. 
when I saw it, I said, with this my crow crow worry eye, let me start by earning a quarter of a million for speaking. So I started with that. And the next engagement, somebody called me. Sir, how much will it cost, you, uh, cost us to speak to, to us? I said, it's a quarter of a million. He said, that's expensive. I said, I went to good schools. He said, I went to good schools too. I said, you didn't go to the ones I attended. Some of you prize yourselves too low. You, you let your family background, you let one of the things I hate most about university is cut off mark. <laughs> cut off mark. Don't let your cut off mark and whatever you studied cut your destiny and your value. I studied medicine, but I'm selling Gary. I've, medicine has not, did not give me wealth. Everything that has given me wealth is outside medical practice. In fact, my professor was poor. That's why I stopped at the age of 40. That's why your lecturers are always going on strike. They are poor. I don't go on strike. So, I said a quarter of a million. I said, um, I, said I told her, I also stay in Swiss Spirit Hotel. And the suite I stay is um, 90,000 naira a night. I was just talking, my heart was still making whether she will refuse. And I said, the material for the lecture is 200 naira per material. And um, I'll give you, uh, how many people do you want? She said, everything they paid me for a 30-minute lecture was about 400,000 minus the hotel, minus the hotel for my PA. When I ate dinner, it was 25,000 naira. I said, so this thing is possible. Are you following what I'm saying? So, one of the problems you have, that woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 1, she was in a financial situation, but she cried unto Elisha. My husband is dead. It is that cry, that desire, that, that endless desire not to remain in that financial cocoon or constraint that creates the magnetism that breaks, it takes from the kingdom, the kingdom wealth and brings to you. You don't understand me yet. I did a video in the back of my hillock truck on the reality of aging. Some of, how many of you saw that? I, you saw it. I think Tunde had not shared it and uh, Kanayo or Kanayo shared it. I said I, I described how I should be buried and all that. And a woman called me from a company. I was in the farm after about a year. Is that Dr. Charles Apoke? I said, yes, ma'am. Are you the man that did the video on the back of a hillock? Yes, ma'am. Can you speak to us for 20 minutes? I said, yes, ma'am. You have to, if you want more money, change your language. There are a class of people because your money is in people's hands. I'll come to that. There's a class of people you must break into to flip your finances. The reason bicycle repairer is poor is because his customers are poor. Are you following what I'm saying? An Okada mechanic will be poor, but somebody that repairs power bikes will be rich because his customers are rich. And so the first capacity you need to develop is the capacity to fit into the atmosphere of greatness, the atmosphere of wealth. That's why my father sent me to Government College Ugili, sent me to FGC Wari, and sent me to the University of Ibadan so that I could meet with the children of the elite and so that I can have an appetite for life and so that I can know how to communicate with them and behave like them. If not, their wealth won't come to you. You can't even marry into their class. Am I talking to somebody? That's why I sent my children to Europe. That's why I sent them from Europe to America to go and develop the American business culture. So, yes, ma'am. Um, okay, we'll talk to you by 5 o'clock. I ran away from the farm because there's a demon in Yoruba language called Ejukonimu. Ejukonimu means make trouble come out from something. It is the day you borrow your friend's car that the tire gets bust. 
It is the day you have an important appointment that trailer crosses the road. How many of you have noticed that? That's so I left the farm. I needed to position myself to receive that call. I connected my phone, charged my power bank so that in case of Ejukoni I will be in anyway. Can you be in Lagos by tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. How much do we pay you for 20 minutes? I said, you are disrupting my program. But my heart was making, you are disrupting my program. So you pay me $1,000 for the 20 minutes. I said, no, that's expensive. You know, we're a company. But we'll pay you half a million. I don't reach there now. <laughs> Half a million for 20 minutes. How much did they pay me when they shout for really? <laughs> All those poor demons, eh? very terrible demons. They start like propeller with one leg like this. <laughs> they must break plastic chair before they settle down. <laughs> so you're going to be speaking to the directors of my company. Um, can you prepare a voucher? I said, I don't give voucher to churches. He said, no, this is a company. And you must get ready to speak to the United Nations as he see me. And I got there. They carried me with escort siren, took me to uh, a co hotel. I, which floor do you want to stay? I said, What is the highest floor here? They said, 24th floor. I said, That's where I want to stay. <laughs> and I finished talking. They gave me a quarter of, I mean, a half a million. It is because I desired it. Let me explain to you. I won't quote too many scriptures. When you have an intense desire, it goes into your subconscious. Your subconscious is not logical. Your subconscious is where the Holy Spirit interacts with your spirit. What happens is that as this intense desire, somebody was saying that in the previous meeting. What happens is that as this intense desire is there, goes to the subconscious, the Holy Spirit interfaces with your subconscious and prompts you to act in particular ways that will make this desire come to pass. Doing a video in the farm in the back of the hillocks, I did not premeditate about it. I did not know that Tunde Ednot was going to share it. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, when you take these actions, the next thing you need to do is to declare. Somebody say declare. declare. The year I said that I needed one million in my account balance, it was November 15th that that money entered my account. But I needed to declare it. This is, I want to, that's why countries budget. That's why countries have developmental plans. Are you listening to me? You see, it is we Christians that only live by chance and wait for the devil to attack us. So you must have a developmental plan. You must have a vision. The life I am living now is what I decided at the age of 23 that I will have a global family. I will only go to work when I need to go to work. I will not practice medicine beyond the age of 40. And at 40, I stopped. So you need to declare it because you are created in the image and likeness of God. And God flipped the formless and dark earth by declaration and pronouncement because the Holy Spirit was hovering and incubating. It is incubation that turns a formless egg to beaks and feathers after 21 days of incubation at 37 degrees centigrade. So when you have this earnest desire, this is the kind of life I want to live. This is how much I want to have. This is the kind of compound. I live in an eight bedroom house plus a boys quarter with 10 toilets in, on half an acre. Recently when they were reconstructing my road, I came back from somewhere with Abraham. I saw about Eight buses, a Hilux, and a Mercedes 450 GL packed. Why did I buy half an acre? I hate, come and remove your motor, make a pass. So as I was planning that ahead, it came to pass. But let me say, when you now, when, when, when you now, <laughs> when you now declare it, there's something. God said, let there be light, and light came. There's something called panpsychism. Can we say it together? 
Say it again. Panpsychism. Panpsychism means that all of God's creation hears. So let there be light. Light came out. Shall these bones live? Thou knowest. Prophesy to the bones, and flesh came. And Jesus rebuked the wind, and the wind stopped. Are you following what I'm saying? So, when you practice, when you understand panpsychism, as you declare, after, after earnestly desiring, if you declare, the environment will start arranging itself to make it come to pass. As she was singing, I was saying, what is that musician I know, I won't call her name, what is she singing? That this one, I, you know, I played a lot of rock music. Barang, barang, do, 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 do. The way she held the microphone and was, and was bending, you know, I was singing. Barang, barang, do, 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 do. ACDC, bad company, Ted Nugent, you know. So, but what you need today now is to create a vision, the audience, all these them boner boy, they practice these things. They, you play for Manchester United in your mind before you enter the field. You see yourself in London before you reach London. Yes, I don't, um, they follow me. Yes, so, when you now declare it, the environment now works. And there's something that happens. God can hack websites. When Moses' mother said that, this child is a proper child, I will not kill this child. Moses' mother earned salary for breastfeeding. Because the Holy, the Holy Spirit is not to see demons. It's not to know where they planted bottle. The Holy Spirit is, is to operate in a realm beyond human understanding. Am I talking to somebody? The Holy Spirit went and hacked Pharaoh's daughter's website, www.pharaoh's daughter forward slash go and bath in the river. No, you don't. Am I crazy? No. How did God speak to the fish? www.fish swallow Jonah. <laughs> but listen, did Jonah live as a human being in the fish, in the belly of the fish? No. God dematerialized him into the digital form. There is money in this atmosphere now. There is CNN here. When you have the right application, then you can download it. So, you... You, there is a realm of the spirit you operate in when you refuse to fear money, you hate poverty, you refuse to think that money is difficult to create. I mean, to, to, yes, you create money, and then you can call it into existence. God hacks people's websites. What did he make? Can I, I've never, can I, oh, can I, does not know me. What made him to share my video? What made today and Edna to be sharing my videos, including the one I did in the rain during answers? Because that year, 2020, I declared that it was my year of globalization, that I was tired of being a local pastor. I've been tired of being Nigerianized. I wanted to be a global citizen. It was answers. I did that video. Tunde Edna shared it, and people were calling me from all over the world. The one I did that, I've been married and stupid. Somebody from Ukraine shared it to my son in Germany. And my, he asked my son, is that your father? My son said, yes. He says, it's a lie. How can this kind of man be your father? He's a medical doctor. He's an orthopedic surgeon. He's a German citizen. But me, in Ugeli, because I stayed there, I could globalize my mind. I could conceptualize it. And I declared it. God went and arranged it and pushed me to make a video in the bush. They don't understand me. The question is, what kind of life do you want to live? What kind of monies do you want to control? Did they enter? Your problem is that you have been conditioned by university education to be a civilized slave. A civil servant is a civilized slave. That's why you can't determine when you close from work. You can't determine where you will work. You can't determine your income unless you get angry and go on strike. And salary 
is imprisonment. Because a human being that cannot plan immediately will wait till month end. He's already in prison. Salary plus hope capital of promotion. <laughs> in fact, the promotion is, 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 is punishment, grade level. They grade you and they level you. But if you decide to break that rank and see that you can create wealth beyond salary and not, not see salary as your determinant of your income, even qualification, then you can go to the next realm that we are going into. So it is you now. Forget salary. Forget your qualification. For, for, what is Bonner Boy's qualification? What did be Bonner Boy qualification? What did he read? Edo, MC Edo Peking, what did he read? Do you know what he read? Which university did they attend? Do they even wear suit like you? These people have understood some basic principles. And if you don't know them, you will, no matter, you can be born again and be poor. So let me quickly go through some things. Number one, this strong desire, you declare it. Then number two, insight. Somebody say insight. insight. What have you of sale value in the house? Second Kings chapter 4 from verse 1, verse 2. Now, let me give you a little insight. I shared with uh, Deborah. Where is Deborah? I shared with Deborah yesterday. Okay. Insight. You need to know, have an insight about money. That woman had oil in her house, but her husband died poor. Why? She did not have insight. Insight is seen beyond ordinariness. I've shared this with you before. Bring out your calculator. Bring out your calculator. Bring it out quickly. We need to run. 250 times 40 times 20 times 12 times 10. 250 times 40 times 20 times 12 times 10. How much is that? 24. Okay. Sir, just look for 40 people that can buy something of 20, 250 naira from you for 20 days in a month, for 12 months in a year, for 10 years, you will make a turnover of 24 million. Now, this is very fundamental in what I'm going to teach you next. Now, increase the number to 80 people that can buy something of 250 from you for 20 days, for 12 months in a year, for five years, you have 24 million. Now increase it to 500 Naira. In two and a half years, you will make 24 million turnover. Increase it to 1,000 Naira. In one year, three months, you will make a turnover of 24 million. So the insight for you to flip your finances, what is, Bini has more than, uh, more than uh, how many people now? 80 people. You mean that you can't look for 80 people to buy something of 500 Naira from you if you see 80 people buy something of 1,000 Naira from you, in 1.25 years, one year, three months, it's 48 million. The secret of flipping wealth is look for what people can buy in small units and in multiples with regular frequency and consistently, and you will become rich. Why are you looking at me like that? I have a pastor. He has 20 POS spots in area area market. Assuming one POS spot brings 2,000 naira times 20. 
That's 40,000 Naira daily. In fact, any time a problem is created and you are willing to provide a solution to it, you are, you are flipping your financial page. And any time circumstances get bad in any economy, it's only the poor that suffer. The rich get richer. So don't be afraid of economic meltdowns. The economy only melted, it didn't evaporate. Create containers, determine the channel it is flowing to, and put a container and you will collect the money. Now, the simple reason you have not created multiple wealth is because you are thinking big. The testimonies we share in church are big testimonies. Dr. Poke, 500,000 for how many minutes? It didn't start in one day. And you don't get it every day. Am I talking to somebody? So what do I do? I have multiples of things that I sell. My wife sells rice in the school. If I go to preach, they give me a bag of rice. We use it to cook rice to sell to 1,500 students. In fact, what you need today is to take over what poor people are doing, illiterates are doing, and do it better. That's why we have Bole Festival in Port Harcourt. I asked a woman, I started a project we call HELP, Hawkers Economic Leverage Program. I saw a woman roasting Bole and yam and with sauce and fish in the Wari General Hospital Junction. I asked her, Madam, you they sell up to 10,000 naira a day. Say 10,000 are small money now. There are some of these women that can sell up to 20,000 naira a day. 20,000 naira is 20 people buying something of 1,000 naira. Fish and bullet. Just now, I don't reach 1,000 naira. So throw away this your certificate, put it somewhere else. If your certificate cannot feed you, it's a receipt that you attended university. It's not different from the one Chicago gave to somebody. <laughs> so take your certificate, put it aside. I went, I read medicine from the University of Ibadan. I schooled with Americans in Ibadan. I'm a brilliant man. When I went to do masters, I made 10 A's. No person has beaten that record. 10 A's, not in medicine, in social sciences. But you see, academics, if it does not translate to finances, will lead to frustration. And so, this is your overpackaging. What will kill your generation is overpackaging. Anything you will pull away from your body when you go to bed is not helping you. Am I talking to somebody? Some of you young boys, you are carrying iPhone, and the, the cost of doing your hair is so much, but you don't have any sustainable business. So, look for what illiterates are doing. Repackage them, and let the elite class patronize you. You will find out that you will start making money. Are you still with me here? Yes, sir. There's a girl that, that I don't know what to, I don't know whether this can fly on social media. There's a girl that opened a place of shaving women in uh, Uyo or Calabar. I saw it on Facebook. It is 10,000 naira to shave a woman, shaving and waxing of that Bermuda Triangle area. <laughs> you know, ships get lost in. You can get lost in that area if you don't know, take care. So, <laughs> I'm not saying that you, you. Now that one you could laugh past you. <laughs> so, the, the, I went to cut this hair. I will go there again. I even dashed the boy 1,000 naira extra. The clipper, there's no demon in that clipper. Some of them, if they use it, you, you think that a witch crashed your head. Clipper, noiseless. Then the way he attended to me to smoothen it, he first put one oil. Then he spent he spent more than 
30 minutes to one hour attending to me. Just for, just for one five. I gave him 1,000 naira extra. And in that barbing salon, there is this massaging machine. You know, all these old people walking with uh, bent alignment is not demon. Some of them is bad mattress. Some of them is just, they need massage. So I sat in the machine. The thing was, I, walk, I got up from that place straight. I'm praying that this hair should grow quickly again so that I can go back. Am I talking to somebody here? Just think of a problem in Benin. God is good motos. This, those children took transportation, took it, they are, they, their father was here, took it to a higher level. And my courier problem to send message through Agbe Rose in the motor park and all that was really a problem to sell, send my gari to Abuja. You know, I sell gari online, to send my gari to Abuja. But I went to God is good motos. The way they repackaged the gari, took my address and all that. I sent an email, a WhatsApp message to me and all that. I, I want to go there again to send Gary. What we need in this country is young people taking over services that are not being properly rendered. Render them with class. Am I talking to somebody? Then, let me also talk to you in the church. The reason some of you serving in church have not grown financially is that you are always thinking of congregation, you are not thinking of generation. You are always thinking of, the, I'm a member of the Church of God Mission, the, my, the branch church I attend, the members are not more than this, place. I'm an usher then. But I taught beyond the church. I taught beyond the denomination, I taught about the nations. Am I talking to somebody like this media man, it is not enough for him to take my pictures. He can develop a page on Instagram and people will patronize him. He can take unique pictures of flowers, unique pictures of different places in Benin, put on Instagram and am I talking to somebody? Like the protocol team. Why can't Emwa and the protocol team organize, have a protocol, let the company be protocol, Nigeria Limited. Your duty is to receive people on behalf of people. Your duty is to prepare ushers for ceremonies. Your duty is to train people. You can, Abraham trains companies. Abraham is sitting there, they are buying his book from South Africa as he's sitting down there. They are buying from Ghana. So you serve in church because, and you struggle for position in church because you think that position is, equi is equivalent to finances. Title does not bring resources. It is the ability to lift yourself beyond your locality and see yourself serving in an arena bigger than this, and you'll be surprised how much they will pay you for doing what you are not paid here. Did they enter? Okay. The next thing is you have insight. You don't need to start big. You have to start small what you will sell, the services you will render, and the patronage. Now, but you must have a unique selling point. My school, hello ma, my school, people will come for admission, we will tell them, come tomorrow. Because the number of people coming for admission, there are so many that we have to reschedule people, but other schools are looking for, for for students, how? I must have shared this with you. Number one, I put a personal touch to every child. When the children come to school, as they are closing, we powder their necks. We powder them, we tuck in their uniforms. So when their parents see them, they are fresh. When they are going in the street, particularly the young ones, they go, which school be this? Which school you're picking they go? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, uh, as one of my drivers carried my students. There I heard that they didn't carry him well, insulted the mother. You know, poor people have bad mouth and bad attitude. So me, I wore a suit, wore a cap, entered an SUV, put on the AC, put Christian jazz music. I drove down. Mumu no the rich. Forget this guest speaker thing. I got there. You must be strategic. 
You must be intentional. I am going to win customers. I am going to bring more clients by this singular act. So when I got there, I wound down the glass. The AC hit the mother. Oh! I said, Una, do enjoy you. Some of you must have seen the video I did in our second school when I carried a baby on my back during admission. And I was going with the baby, and parents saw doctor carrying the baby on the back, and the baby slept. So I carried the child. I deliberately, slowly put the boots in the boot of the car, closed it, and I started driving slowly so that the mother could pose with me. Now the owner of the school come carry my picking, so <laughs> now a medical doctor, if they travel overseas as if they go toilet, as if she they follow me. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know? Let me quickly say this and then we'll move. If you treat men like trash, you can't get their cash. If you treat men. If you treat men like royalty, you get their loyalty. So that it was that special treatment that I was given. I was given. Why did I do that? That child is a first child. That child pays me, assuming a hundred thousand, has gone beyond that now, a hundred thousand naira per annum. That child was two years old. He was going to stay with me for 14 years. That's one point something million. Are you following what I'm saying? 1.4 million for 14 years. And that's a first child. And I, when, I, when schools close, I always multiply each girl by four. So the mother is going to produce three other children. <laughs> I, are you a robot man? Are you know robo? People don't know how to romance robo men. But they know how to impregnate their wives. <laughs> you don't know, sir. You know, robo man romances like, you don't know, sir, I love you. <laughs> Why you can't they laugh like that? Is that how to romance? <laughs> And they know, how, they, they know how to impregnate their wives. So four children will come. Four times 1.4 million is 5.6 million. And it is women that bring children to school. Times 10 is 56 million. So a pastor went to block my street and said that I do blood money. I do sense money. He, they can't understand you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So you must take what illiterates are doing. Add class add skill, add whatever. The next thing you need is inspiration. I talked about inspiration. Inspiration, and Isaac sowed in the land. It was a combination of inspiration and instruction. The Holy Spirit that always knows where witches are, where demons are. I don't like that Holy Spirit. I like the Holy Spirit that teaches me how to make money, that leads me into all truths, discoveries. Not of weird. Check all those people who do land deliverance. They all resemble each other. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's because you know what I'm saying. They all resemble each other. Very cranky looking people. You know, they pray useless prayers. They pray to the moon. Pray to, what do you concern me with sun? You plead blood of Jesus on the sun. You want to dry it up or what is it? <laughs> inspiration. Let me talk about inspiration. Uh, sir, I was uprooting cassava on my 60th birthday, and I needed to lay the foundation of my polytechnic. I didn't have money. So I had an inspiration to do a video. I just lifted up the cassava stem. I said, this is six months cassava from my land, and this land is fertile. Africa is not cursed. It is blessed. And I have 65 acres for sale. If you want to buy, call Susu number. Then I dropped it. Do you know I sold 15 acres within a week, and I got 750,000? I sold the 10 acres and the same week. I got 500,000 because I told them I would take 50,000 on top of each acre I sell. The land, as at that time, was not my own. It was another person's own. (laughs) (laughs) 
Are you following what I'm saying? That inspiration to do the video. But today, I have sold more than 100 acres. Not to people in Ugeli, but people in the diaspora. People from Italy, people from Greece, people from the United States. Because I started buying. Once I saw that sale, I started buying. I bought to an extent that one day I forgot I had bought 10 acres somewhere. It was my boy that reminded me. So I'm selling land. I went into real estate business just with a video. And I'm having another inspiration. For me, selling the land is not enough. I must turn them to an estate. The environmental sanitation, the refuse collection, I will establish a company that will collect the refuse. I will establish the water tank that will give them water. My daughter will run the supermarket in that community. I will, they will pay my security firm. I will get three kilostar generators. I will connect natural gas to them and be supplying them electricity with prepaid meter. So it will be very difficult for you. It is now that I know I'm really called. <laughs> because before now, Sometimes we used to put Banga on fire to go and preach. When the honorarium comes, it will now buy fish for madam from the honorarium. No, I don't need the honorarium really. It is you that needs to bless me so that you can be blessed. Am I talking to somebody? Because how much are you going to give me that really satisfies me? So I have these concepts are there. I will, I'll give them prepaid meter. I'll be generating electricity. And God has helped me. One place I've been selling, the, the commissioner for works is from that community. I'm not like P1. P1 sells along the road. I sell in the bush. Because I realize that the purchasing power of people is not that much. They would prefer, when I was doing my videos in the farm, and people were seeing me in the farm, they liked farming. I did a video, somebody called me from Ireland. He said, I don't dress well, that I should package myself. I go, come where suit go farm. <laughs> Just to annoy him, I now entered the wheelbarrow and did a video. And I posted it. Oh, doctor, so natural. Such a humble man. I like to live this kind of life. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Just crazy. I'm, old, I'm the personally certified, certified madman. I'm, I'm not normal. So I, if you behave normally, you only get normal results in this generation. Now, so let me quickly move on. The next thing you need is information. Information. And Naomi heard that there was bread in Bethlehem. Then she prepared to move. Now, the problem with church people is that they think that everything that will bless them must come from pastor or come from the Bible. Church people will always ask you, is it in the scripture? When you hear, first thing you do is to internalize, like that calculation I gave to you now. If you don't internalize it, it won't work for you. When you internalize it, you analyze it. When you analyze it, you personalize it. Then you act on it. And Naomi prepared so, I heard that about fracking. How many of you know what is called fracking? Fracking is the production of gas from rocks using pneumatic pressure. The word petroleum, petroleum, it means rock gas, rock oil. So there are some, in, in some countries, there is gas trapped in rocks. So they use pneumatic pressure. When I heard that the, um, um, fracking had come and the cost of production of petroleum was low, I now realized that countries like Nigeria, their economies will go down because the uh, price of oil was going to fall with fracking. So I was telling them in the churches, I said, I'm not going to increase school fees. For three years, I did not increase school fees. I told them the economy was going to fall. And then the economy crashed. They couldn't pay teachers. They couldn't pay workers. And then those of them in expensive schools 
Meanwhile, I was upgrading my school. There's a building there with 30 toilets. I was upgrading the school, upgrading everything. If you go to my nursery now, we are renovating. If you go to the school where I came to carry me, it's like Europe. I was upgrading, upgrading. I also noticed that the town was developing. So I was upgrading. And then the economy crashed. And then they couldn't pay salaries. People started removing their children from the expensive schools to my school. And they got to the school. It was very beautiful. And then they produced good results. And then I didn't increase school fees. I was waiting. <laughs> you, don't, you don't do anything anyhow. You don't marry anyhow. I was telling Deborah, you don't marry anyhow. I didn't marry my wife anyhow. She has to be a nurse to com compliment me as a doctor. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So you don't marry anyhow. I used to prophesy upon my children in the womb. I would lay hands and prophesy to them. So you intentionally create things. When they had settled down in the school, and I practiced what is called salami effect, that Yoruba word, there's an English version of it in finances, salami effect. I started increasing the school fees gradually. 500, 1,000. They were not feeling it. They were paying. <laughs> and because they were getting results and because they were already addicted, they started coming, coming. And so my school grew. And the last one we did, they produced very good results. What I did, I shared it online. And parents say, wow, girls making A1 in mathematics. They started bringing their children. <laughs> and I was making more money. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? So, information. You must open your ears. What is happening? What is trending? Then, I will quickly move on. Number two, the next thing is relationships. Relationships. And Ruth met Boaz. And her life changed. So you must intentionally, purposefully pray that you will come across people who are able to give you leverage. Customers that can lift you up. Sing in the presence of somebody who will, wreck, who will put you in a label that will change your testimony. Dance in the presence. Some, one boy did dancing in the rain. And he got a scholarship to go overseas. One boy shared a gala or whatever to prisoners. And Obi Kubana gave him scholarship. One guy stood in front of Peter Obi's uh, car. And things happened. One baby in, in Asaba, they carried the baby during Peter Obi's campaign. And their finances changed. You must intentionally blind the eyes of stupid people from around you. Particularly you girls. Engagement with a stupid boy is like a PhD course. You know the green marry, you know the green come out. <laughs> and such poor boys are usually very sexually active. They will turn you upside down, you know, do some assault. <laughs> because the poverty is with anger. <laughs> and you know, poor people are very aggressive. If they fight, if they don't burn house, they don't rest. So when they see you, particularly if you are from a rich family, avoid poor boys. The anger they have against rich people, against your father, now you go suffer. And poor boys are always easily insulted. Don't look at me like that. So I did a video. Somebody saw the video. And called me. He said, can I invest in your business? I said, no. I've been too close to you. Let me help you build your own. And um, you let me help me build my own. And I will help you build your own. That singular transaction has brought millions to me. Gifts. Sponsorship. And I've also made profit for him. Millions. I sold property for him recently of 70 million. 
and I bought 280 plots of land for him. So, relationship. Always ask. The Bible says there that in Ruth chapter 2 from verse 1, it said there was Boaz, who is a kinsman redeemer, a wealthy man. Until Ruth deliberately prayed, let me step into the farm of the man in whom I will find favor. Her legs did not go to the farm of a poor man. Went into the farm of a rich man. So you must deliberately pray for clients that can change your story. Clients that can change the story of your business. Double Larry, I mean, uh, somebody made a dress for Omokpai. And Omokpai wore it to Kanu. And the governor of Kanu says, said, I like this dress. Can your tailor also make for me? And the boy started making dresses for the for the governor of Kanu State, a lot of dresses. If you sew for local government chairman, it's different from when you sew for governor. Am I talking to somebody? There are some people that need to live your life this season. There are new people that need to replace them. There are new audiences you need to perform. There are, there are new customers that need to come. Customer when go buy plenty, you know they price too long. Okay. <laughs> okay. The next thing I will say, then I'm done. Okay, two things. Number one, know the harvest that is currently on. And Ruth got to more uh, uh, Bethlehem during the barley harvest. Harvest has several functions in it: cutting. Tying, um, transportation, winnowing, threshing, sacking, and sales and processing. But there is a very many one called gleaning. Gleaning was there. Gleaning was for the poor, the widow, and the stranger. And she qualified for that. So it was from gleaning that she got into marriage with Boaz. But listen, when she ate, she kept some and took to her mother-in-law that was up to 13 liters. Listen, your finances cannot change if the leakages from your life are more than what is coming in. Because income is a spring while wealth is a leak. It is not how much you make that matters. It is how much you are able to retain and reinvest. In these hard times, you need to do the following arrows. Review, reduction, reorganization. Review your life. What are the things? I sold one of my cars. If it makes like this, ooh, one liter. Ooh, one liter. I say, I catch you. I sold it very cheaply to, to do deliverance on myself. <laughs> and I added money to it and bought a property so that the money can grow there. So review your life. What is it that is taking so much from you that is preventing you from saving? You cannot continue doing the same thing the same way and expect a change. She ate and had some left. Reduce some of your friends. Reduce some of your journeys. Reduce some of the ceremonies you attend. You can't buy every Ashoi B. Am I talking to somebody? You can't even data. You can't look at every video. You can't watch every video and all that and all that. Reduce. Then you now see that when you readjust, you have more money to reinvest. One of the things you must know is that in an economic meltdown, it is he who has liquidity that has power. Because things are going to be sold very cheaply. Yahoo Yahoo boys are going to sell their GLK very cheaply. You can buy it, keep it for some time, and resell. Don't even drive it. People are selling land. In the time of economic meltdown in Egypt, people sold their land, then they sold their bodies. Who up is going to increase? Because some girls, the only commodity they have to sell is their body. 
And if you keep selling that body, it won't last long. Now, what? <laughs> you never even see the name hook up. <laughs> now, create an audience. What did I say? Create an audience. Say it again. Create an audience. When you, all these people, content creators, they are not content creators, they are audience creators. Type pimple popper in your phone. Pimple popper. Pimple popper. You will see Dr. Sandra Lee. Dr. Sandra Lee pops pimples. She's a dermatologist. She has 7.5, 7. Uh, Deborah, how many followers are at yesterday? 7. Point, nearly 8 million followers. 8 million followers. If you give me 8 million followers and you put $8 million, I will take 8 million followers. There was a month I made $1,000 on YouTube from my subscribers. So, if you can create an audience, the more audience you create, remember our calculation of 250 times 40, that number there, the more audience that listens to you, because purchasing is influencing, it's influencing people's appetites. When you influence people's appetite, their monies come to your hand. The Western world has influenced our appetite. We were eating rice before. Most of the rice you eat is rubbish. It's, there's no nutritional value. It's polished rice. It's wasted material. Most of the noodles you eat, just rubbish. So we started eating rice, and we left our traditional meals. Now, somebody has brought these uh, energy drinks with caffeine. Hypertension is going to increase. A lot of young men are going to have hypertension. Somebody introduced colos. Somebody introduced loud. Somebody introduced codeine. Somebody introduced mpuromiri. As long as you, <laughs> even gegemu that has been there, somebody introduced, how many of you know what I'm talking about here? I saw, <laughs> this boy, they laugh. I saw a group of six boys, yahoo yahoo boys, they were, Folding, folding their lives. <laughs> if God wanted you to be a smoker, I would have put the exhaust at the back of your head. <laughs> I say, which one be that? That na, he said na, daddy na loud. He said the 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 this thing is this small, you know, they shark too much. But I've seen somebody collapse because of loud. Codeine has been in existence. Somebody created an an audience for it. Uh, people are creating audience. So when you create an audience that listens to you, then you can get their money. So what audience are you creating? Who are those listening to you? Today, if you are not using the social, the social media is the new oil well. If you are not using it to promote your business, you can't flip your finances. I preached a message like this somewhere, and the people that gathered were not more than this crowd. But it has been giving me money even when I'm asleep. When I wake up, there are dollars in my account. Because I preached the message, I shared it on my YouTube channel, and it has been bringing money. So if you are not on social media, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, that you can monetize, where you can advertise your product, where you can create an audience, you can't flip your finances. Covon will still be worrying you. Because Covon, now, internet has overtaken Covon. They only meet at night. In the internet, and they only meet on top of trees. Today, I have a mentorship group. As at Abraham, we should be clo getting close to 800, eh? Okay. I have a, a nucleus in Namibia. I have a nucleus in Kenya. I have a nucleus in Zambia. I have a nucleus in uh, the US, in the, in the UK. In the, I have people I mentor from Japan. This morning, I have preached to them by 4 a.m. I woke up by 4 a.m. and preached part of this message to them. 
part of this audience team to them. So I've preached to 700 and something people globally this morning. And they're going to share them in different platforms in different nations. And I have flipped my ministry by keying into the current harvest. Listen, don't just study computer science. Go and study cyber security. Six months online course before you emigrate. Let me go back to that shoe, that tight shoe. If Nigeria is too tight for you, please, Jackpa. We, my generation, ate the meat of this nation, ate the flesh of this nation, and even removed the bones from your mouth. We are a wicked generation, evil generation that has polluted this country and perverted everything that remains in this country. Where forgery is no longer an offense. Where forgery of certificate is no longer an offense. Where forgery of NYC certificate should not remove a governor. When uh, there's somebody resigned in those days because of just forgery as speaker. Today, people who are supposed to be in prison are those sitting and adjudicating over this country. If you can go, you are not the cause of the problem of the country. We are the problem, the cause of the problem of this country. And we, this are my wicked generation. Our children have dual citizenship. Ah. Look, I tell you something. Yeah. If somebody remove, release your air gas inside motor, and you didn't hear the window, please bring your face outside and get fresh air. Don't inhale the rubbish of my generation. If you can go, go. But when you are going, go with a skill. Go with knowledge. Go with a vision that this nation is still a good nation, that it is easier to make money in this country than any other country. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles. Praise God. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Every time I listen to you, I read um, your materials, it's always um, expository. My pleasure, sir. You know, and we are glad that we have people like you that can still point us in the right direction and beat us in the right direction if we're not going. Praise God. How many of you are really excited that you made, you made, you made today's service? All right. So... I will, I will just start with yesterday at the hotel, sir, where we're just sharing briefly. And you mentioned, um, you mentioned the story of um, the two Josephs, for example. Yes. How their pages were flipped. Yes. Without them even um, having an input in, in, in the page flipping. So we're talking about flip the page. Yes. And for many of us here in Nigeria, our pages are being flipped. What do we do? I'll give you an example for those of you that don't, that don't understand. So Joseph in the Bible, um, he was beloved of his father. He was very comfortable. And his page flipped when his brothers sold him as a slave. Do we agree? So he didn't have an input in that. You know, whether he liked it or not, his page has flipped. Joseph, that was uh, the father of Jesus, his page flipped when his... Uh, fiancé came to tell him that I don't carry belle. <laughs> he didn't have a choice about that. And many of us in Nigeria, our pages are flipping because the economy is such that we don't have control over it right now. You wake up and they tell you that diesel is over a thousand naira for a liter, fuel is over 600 naira. You don't have a choice. So I, I, I would love you to throw some more lights on, on that because you, ma you made mention of some certain things <coughs> yesterday while we were discussing. Okay, number one, Joseph in the Bible, the one that was sold into slavery, there was something peculiar about him. He carried ye, the grace of God. Productivity, according to the Apoki formula of productivity, is G times E times S raised to the power 4, all over C equal P. G times E times S raised to the power 4, all over C 
equals P. C is constraints and the condition that you live in. G is the grace of God. Where circumstances, then E is effort. Where circumstances, your page has flipped, and circumstances are difficult, put in more effort. Ruth worked harder than the other girls in the farm, put in more effort. In whatever you are doing now, put in more effort to produce more. Be nicer to your customer, solicit for more customers, increase your audience by even going outside your comfort zone to look for people to patronize you. Put E. S number one is have a system of doing things. Improve on your system of doing things. S number, like now, I don't go to the farm every day because of the cost of petrol. The Hilux will need about 10 liters to go to the farm and back. That's 6,000 something. So what I did, I bought a phone for the woman so I can call her, know what she's doing. She can give me a video call. Are you following what I'm saying? So I, I developed a strategy. S number two, have structures on ground. As you are now, don't follow the trend. Don't follow the, the fashion. Don't follow what is raining. Put structures on ground. I built my first house when I was 30-something years old, 32. I married at 26. I bought my first car at the end of youth service. I opened my first hospital at the age of 29. I... I, I was intentionally fighting poverty because poverty is a great wrestler. You must break the vertebral column of poverty and blind it on behalf of your children. Mm. I started buying land very early. Where I have my school now, I bought it 300 and something thousand. I have sold millions to train children overseas. Where I built online is about 30 something million. So put structures on ground. We have things that, as they increase the price of fuel, we have a transport system in the school. So transportation per child left 25,000. I went to 40,000 era. So our income in, from the transport sector did not reduce. It's only, even though the number of those who are carrying reduced, which helped my wife to, but the income did not reduce. And because I have children overseas, I earn money in two currencies. I wanted my son to give some money to my last born. So he sent money from Germany to him. I didn't have money to send to Germany, so I compensated my senior son with two acres of land. I told him, I will give you two acres. You are not buying land. You are living a Yibo life. I gave him two acres of land. As I go home, now I will do the deed of transfer to him. So he was more willing to give because he was going to get land. Yeah. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Then talk about sustainability. Dig wells. Isaac dug wells. The well that Jacob drank from was dug by, I mean, that Jesus drank from in John chapter 4 was dug by Joseph, I mean, uh, Jacob, and handed over to Joseph. Joseph was born in 1774 BC. 1774 BC to 30 AD was about 1,800 years that they dug that well. That well was excavated in 1945. It was 138 feet deep. So dig wells. Set up businesses that will ever remain in demand. Children must go to school. When they come to school, they must eat. So I have a canteen that gives me money on a daily basis. I have plantain that I used to do the plantain chips for them. Are you following what I'm saying? Dig wells. Now, um, <laughs> you're looking at me with plantain chips. I sell plantain chips. I sell gari. You understand? I sell potatoes. I've planted cucumbers. I farm on 40 acres. More than 40 acres. So, um, children must eat in the canteen. Children must wear school uniforms. Children must buy books. I have a printing press. 
that prints the exercise book, the drawing books, and my son became a millionaire at the age of 22 because he wrote nursery books with the mother. So he's earning in dollars in Europe, I mean in euros in Europe, and also earning in Naira here. We are buying things to build a house for him. He doesn't even know how much we are buying, we are spending. Are you following what I'm saying? So dig deep wells. What you are doing now, is this sustainable? You are drinking Azu. <laughs> you are going to club. Do re me, ameno, ameno. V-S-O-P, blood purifier. <laughs> and your life is not purified. You know she say you be mumu. Is it sustainable? Are you following what I'm saying? So look for what is sustainable and what can self-grow itself. Then, fourthly, S number four, seriousness. In anything you are doing now, be more serious. Even in your marriage, be more serious in retaining your husband. I just told you that hookup is going to increase. These girls are desperate. You, don't you see them on a video? They can remove pants in the street for 10K. Have you not seen them before? So, be, anything you are doing, take your business more serious, put in more effort, stay longer, but still come to church. Make sure you, you, you retain your customers. So, that's one aspect. Number, so the grace of God followed Joseph. Wherever he was, he was productive. In this dispensation where they want to retrench people, where they want to sack people, be most productive where you are because of the grace of God. Wherever you relocate to, let the grace of God follow you. But Joseph, the father of Jesus Christ, he made a mistake the first time. Number one, let me say this. Mary was not the only virgin. Joseph was not the only good boy. But they were the two people that had capacity. Mary could carry her pregnancy and trek for 96 miles, which was a journey of two days to four days at 10. She was rejected by her people. Imagine an airworker or somebody com uh, coming to Benin and not finding accommodation. At times like this, people are not ready to carry you and your vision because they are finding it difficult with their vision. So they had, she had to deliver in a manger. She adjusted to hard circumstances, but she still needed to carry her vision through. But the angel did not help her to push. Neither was there a midwife. At times like this, you don't see people to help you carry your vision on your own. Push your baby out in the manger. Then the angels will go and announce it, and wise men will bring gifts to you. Then when Joseph, Joseph now learned from that experience of not having an accommodation, and then at night God woke him up to go to, to Egypt, not so. He was prepared. He had foreign currency. He had stuff. He had a good car, good horse, or donkey to move. In this generation, it's called a VUCA generation. VUCA means volatile for V, U, uncertain, C, complex, A, ambiguous. With people like Bob Risky, we don't know who is a man or a woman any longer. So you things are changing so fast. But Try and have what is solid and what is dependable. So he had what he could immediately move that night. When he got to Egypt, he went with a skill, a skill, a sellable skill. From the very first day, I suspect, he started looking for roofs that were leaking, repairing benches that were broken, patching things. And he did not send home for money because he had a skill. One skill is not enough in this generation. The Europe you are going to, one job does not feed somebody. Develop skills, multiple skills that people can patronize you from. So, Okay, sir. So um, put your hands together and help me appreciate Dr. Charles. Um, but, sir, do you, do you think everybody, if, because I feel like, Traveling out, Jakba is like a very, is like escape from reality. If we all go, who would, who would develop this country? And so do you, would you advise everybody to just, once you feel like Nigeria is not working for you, leave? 
let me say this. My son that is in Germany, if he was in UBTH, they would have frustrated him. He, he does hip replacement surgeries, complex surgeries. As of today, he drives the 2023 model of the car that he's driving. His car is 2023 model. He can't drive that here. I'm not saying every person should leave. I'm saying if you have the opportunity and you have the skills, leave. Number two, if you have parents like me, like my daughter is not leaving. My daughter read education and she's managing two schools, two big schools with more than 100 graduates. I bought a car for her. I pay her a very good salary. She lives in a three-bedroom house with solar panel. She doesn't buy petrol. She is comfortable. She's married to a man that imports textiles. So she's comfortable. She doesn't need to go overseas because I provided a foundation. The son of Coca Chemist, you know Coca Chemist? You know he read banking and finance first. Then he went to read pharmacy to be able to manage those pharmacies. He doesn't need to leave to go overseas. For those of you who have parents, who have businesses that are doing well here, you don't need to leave. Number two, you have something that you are doing here that is productive. You have a business that is generating revenue. You don't need to go. But if you have the opportunity, you do a comparative analysis, and you see that it is better for you to be there, please. For me, I was against marrying foreigners before now. But I told myself, even the Nigerian girls that are married to black men, they, they are giving them a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. Once you take them from here, they reach overseas, they just grow wings. So let me... <laughs> my own is just to take my genes out of this nation. My brother, let me tell you one thing. If somebody, imagine somebody collapsed in the Nigerian Senate. Your senior player, give him sugar, give him water. <laughs> Do you know if the man is diabetic? So when you, when you are ruled by such, such I don't want to feel something. <laughs> when you are ruled by such people, and you are young, and you have potentials, please, if possible, go. What will happen later is this. When the Indians, how many of, okay, it is my generation that Indians taught in this town. I mean, in Delta State and Bendel. Indians taught us. Did Indian teach you? Yes, sir. Indians taught us. Indian taught you? India College. Imaguero, uh, <laughs> Imaguero, Imaguero, or one place. The principal was Miss Howard, a European. My principal was European. I had European principal, Jones and Davis. Now, then, we had overseas living, Europe living with us. My hospital was one of the best in the commonwealth. So, we didn't need to leave. But today, somebody told me in Springs in South Africa that you Nigerians, criminals. I said, no, sir. Criminality is intelligence looking for an avenue for manifestation in the midst of oppression and deprivation. We are the most intelligent people on earth. You can see it from the records our daughters and our sons are setting in English and mathematics all over the place. We can't allow these potentials to die. But the Indians went back to India, established their Silicon Valley, established hospitals that we are now traveling to for treatment. And if you notice during COVID, nearly every major corporation, every hospital, Nearly every major corporation today has an Indian. And today, an Indian is the prime minister of the UK. Mm -hmm. So these Nigerians going out, they're not just running away. We are exporting them to go and um, produce another breed of people that will come back when sanity will return to this country and develop this country. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Um, sir, if we observe you now, it, it seems as though everything is so easy, but I know that it wasn't always this easy. So I, I would love to share some of your stories of struggles at your early days with us. 
because many of us are right now in that phase of struggle. And so it will help us to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, even though we are not seeing the light. Okay. And you're not even seeing the tunnel. <laughs> the light when the Nepa don't see light. <laughs> so now, my, if you go to the internet, you'll see a lot of my materials. You will see, hold on to your vision. You will also see um, refined by hardship on my 68th birthday. Number one, I grew up in a dysfunctional house. Dysfunctional background. So ancestral causes, I don't believe in such rubbish. Please give me some time. Sure. My grandmother was not properly married. Mm. She was married to a man, and then another woman was coming to commit adultery with her husband. She now asked the woman, who be your husband? He said, nah, Poki. Where are you from? Come. He said, no, talk to uh -huh. How he be? He said, tall, he fair. Uh -huh. One night, she just packed and went to Tokutu and met her Poki. He said, you're one of your wife they lost. He said, yes. He said, day with my husband. I don't come replace her. That was how my grandmother was married. Number two. <laughs> I think, I think she was ahead of her generation. <laughs> now the babes of nowadays, now if you do this kind of thing. So, I grew up in a household where I used to buy cigar for my mother. My mother used to smoke. I grew up in a household where I was the Ogogoro tester for my mother. I, I grew up in a dysfunctional house where Father and mother fought. I started settling quarrel from primary four. Mm. But I have remained married to one wife. I saw those struggles popping up. Quarrel. This. Anger. And I told myself that this mistake will not continue. Mm. So your background should not put you under pressure. I come from an idolatrous background. Those idols don't worry me. It is me that troubles them. So, number two, extreme poverty. And I couldn't pay school fees at government college usually from class two. So I had to break firewood to pay school fees. When I went for my son's graduation in 2012 in Europe, I wept in the hall because I was the only black man there, black parent. And I, when I saw my son, I remember that I would go and cut firewood in the rainy season because it is the fire. If you touch my palm, it's like back of a crocodile. If I slap you, it stays there for two weeks. <laughs> so I would have been taller than this if not for the firewood I was hawking. <laughs> so I would go and <laughs> I will hawk firewood, break firewood. When we are cutting the firewood in the rain, uh, it will be raining from above, and we are inside water to our knees. And I will tell my mommy, cold, cold. He said, cross your leg. I will cross my leg. peace for your body. I will now urinate on my body. The urine will make me warm. So when I saw my son among white children, I could remember my mother telling me, vekoma, vekoma, but my child will not, did not pass through that. So, but you see, in all... Then there was a man in 1973, I couldn't pay second term school fees, 45 naira. And my father went to meet one rich man who was his friend to give him the 45 naira. The man asked him, which school is your son attending? He said, government college, Ugeli. And he told him, why did you, he said in Yorubo language, he said, you don't prevent a child from having big teeth, but he must have big lip to cover. He said, who sent you to send your son to a school of rich people? And my father had one blind eye. I saw him cry from that eye. It grieved my spirit. And he had told me in primary four that I would be a medical doctor. It grieved my spirit. But one of the days, I was addressing the whole Urobo nation in the Urobo hall. There was a chief sitting behind me, and I had a walking stick. And I gave him my walking stick to hold. It was the son of that man. I had, in the midst of all the pain, I was behaving like a masochist. 
a masochist is somebody who enjoys pain. I was having sweetness in my spirit. I knew it would not last forever. Even if they shared food for us then, you know, the fish, will, I, used, I will keep my fish last. I will eat it last. I will say, God, now that I am suffering, let it be that in the later part of my life, it will be sweeter than the beginning. I, I, uh, a few uh, months back, I was the guest speaker for the 56th prize-giving day at FGC Warwick. I finished from FGC Warwick. Ovia Whiskey gave me Guinness Book of Records. But the day I gained admission to that school 45 years back or 43 years back, 47 years back, I can't remember, I didn't have passport photograph. I had to cut my passport from a group photograph I took at Government College, you gave me, stapled into it, and I trekked to Okiri because I didn't have 10 cover for taxi. But I drove a Mercedes to that place. So I, I passed through challenges. There were times I, but the day I married, when I married, we slept, I bought the drinks on credit, I put my wife's wrapper on the floor, and then we used her wrapper to do cutting. We slept on the floor. It was from that floor that I went to Abba, and I was a, doing youth service. The spring was six spring bed. So when she sleeps on this bed, I will sleep on the floor. But today, we live in an eight-bedroom house with 10 toilets, and we have another very beautiful building somewhere, and we have buildings. You see, so um, there were times I needed to really work hard. When I found out that I was not going to practice medicine for long, I started developing an exit plan. In any situation you are in, develop an exit plan. So I started doing businesses. I sold secondhand clothing in Aba with my wife. We would buy Okreka bills, we would open them, I would carry her to the market, I would go to the hospital to work. Then when I come in the evening, when people will don't recognize me, if I notice that they are no longer buying, I will go in front and start doing as if I'm struggling to buy. Then customers will come, then I will sneak away. So I sold secondhand clothing. <laughs> I, when I started the school, I, was the f I cleaned toilets in the school. I was the first bus driver. I was the first gate man. People laughed at me that I didn't used to dress well, that my wife does not dress well. But today, my son-in-law is an importer of textiles, bringing container loads of textiles. Before I came now, it is nine pieces of clothes I gave to somebody to sew for me, and we sew them free. Uh, the, what did I not see? There was a time we soaked Gary with I soaked Gary without sugar when we sold the hospital. At a time, it was only the willy willy of chicken that we could buy, the leg, the neck, and the wings. And it's only a goosey soup. If you took my blood, then you will see a goosey inside <laughs> to my blood. But today, as I'm talking to you, I have the I have a poultry and the broilers I will sell for Christmas. So I passed through, on my 50th birthday, I celebrated my birthday on the road because I needed money to deck the school building. I was to go and speak to robot people in the United States, but I knew I would not come with money. So the invitations I had, I was driving school bus, and I needed to move in such a way that sticker boys, you must have sense, S sticker boys would not affect, hold me. So I moved in the evening, got to about around 10 o'clock, preached, uh, it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I left by 4 a.m. to Port Harcourt, stayed in Tideland Hotel, went to preach to Assemblies of God men from the whole of River State, preached till 2 o'clock. My wife does not sit in the altar. She will sit in the book, boot of the car and bus and be selling. I left Aba by 2 p.m. I faced Unsuka, got to Unsuka around 7. It was my 50th birthday. People were wishing me happy birthday. I was using one hand to answer the phone and I was driving. I preached in Nusuka, sold books. I, I spent that time writing a lot of books, writing a lot of books. I sold books. When I looked at the money in my hand, it was half a million. I opened the roof light of the car, of the bus, put it inside, covered it again, and kept 20,000 in my pocket so that if I'm robber, see me, they won't beat me too much. <laughs> and got home and dead. Recently, I was even still a gate man not too long ago. One woman saw me and just called me, come. I went to meet her. She said, go call me HM. I went to call HM. HM beat her finger and said, your mumu go kill you. 
Now, the owner of the school, you send message. So. I was bus driver. You see, and if you are bigger than your business, it will be less than you. You must bend down, lower your center of gravity, and uproot your obstacle. Number two, learn to know your state, being different from your status. I was Reverend Dr. Apoki, MBBS, Ibadanoya Mama, one of Abba. I was popular, I was a guest preacher, but I'm from a poor family. And I sold the hospital. If I didn't do well, my younger brothers who are idol worshippers will not serve God. So I deliberately needed to know my state and deal with poverty by being humble, to bend down, to do what I needed to do to get rich. The problem with most of you, you think you can escape reality, particularly you, the females. The dress you are wearing is an Okreka dress. Second-hand cloth. But you are not a second-hand citizen. But as much as possible, without making yourself cheap, try to be realistic. Don't put yourself, manufacture yourself before you market yourself. If not, no person will buy you. That is my story. That is my song. Awesome. One more time, help me appreciate Dr. Charles Akoki. We are so glad to have you in church. We wish we could have you more. <laughs> We, we know, but we know you have to go back to Delta stage, you know. So, summary is you need to always put what's ahead of you. That's more important, you know. There's a reason why the rear view mirror of a car is smaller than the width, than, than the screen, because what's behind you is not as important as what's in front of you. Praise God. So, always put what's in front of you as more important than where you're coming from and the challenges that you've, that, that you've been through. You know one thing? I suffered inferiority complex. Mm. I was the ugliest child of my mother. And why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> she will, she, she, my mother would tell me to my face, not be you and take clean my womb. I was the last child. See, see your head. You get head for back. You get head for front. <laughs> like Juju from Oropo. He said, the day when I push you, come out for three days, I know if it work. Huh? So they would castigate me and all that. But check me out. See, see one camera here. Yeah? See another yeah. camera. <laughs> see another camera yeah? I'm a celebrity. God bless you. Help me appreciate Dr. Charles Akoki one more time. Come on, you can do better. Are you going to do that sitting down? Come on, you can do better. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Put your hands. We have made church great again for people who are giving up on church. There is actually a simplicity in Christ Jesus. You don't come to God based on what he will do or based on what he's doing. You come to God based on what Christ has done. And the way to do that is by believing and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior.